Kim Jong in one year, in the last few years, he just spent about almost four million dollar USD, three point eight million dollars, on the lingeries and undergarments. Just alone, that much money for the pleasure squad girls. They're just picking young girls. Some of them are elementary school girls. They, the first thing they ask them. They need to go through eight times, by the way, physical exams to be picked eventually as a pleasure squad member. The first thing is like, have you slept with a man? Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Yeonmi. I'm a North Skin Defector Human Rights Activist. I've been so thrilled and grateful <laughs> and so happy to see the support and love you've been showing me since I came back. Uh, today in this video, I really poured my heart into researching this subject. And also, I think this is something that we're still really ignoring and I mean they know the existence of this really evil practice, something called the Pleasure Squad in North Korea. But the United Nations and resolutions never came up to really sanction North Korea for this the inhumane, barbaric kind of practice. So in this video, I will be talking about how it's even got more corrupt since I've been covering about Pleasure Squad last time. Well, we all have been isolated and with the pandemic and everything, the world has changed. North Korean society also has changed and the country has never been isolated more than now as since its existence really. Uh, in North Korea, the same things happening with the malnutrition, with this mass, mass starvation and death and disease and just human rights violations. Let alone that, Kim Jong Un has been very busy and spending tons of his foreign cash on something that we have not even thought. So Kim Jong Un, in one year, in the last few years, he just spent about almost four million dollar USD, 3.8 million dollars on the lingeries and undergarments, just alone that much money for the pleasure squad girls. And these women are forced to wear these lingeries and have to participate in these parties that Kim Jong-un throws to demand the royalty and uh, controlling the North Korean elite. And so today in this video, basically, we are going to really talk about the brief beginning of the origin of the North Korean Pleasure Squad and why it's been continuing and why Kim Jong-un is still putting so much resources and energy for this something that we might heard of like in the Dark Ages or even before then. So initially, Pleasure Squad began in the 1970s by Kim Jong-il, the second Kim, who wanted to take the power from his father and he had to distract his father. So he found this thing called the Pleasure Squad in the name of uh, pleasuring and the happiness of the dear leader. So he picked up the dispersion young girls from all around the country and you know, gifting them to the Kim Il-sung, the first founder. And of course, then he started like less being interested in politics and partying and enjoying more his time with these girls who are forced to do, do things for the, these dictators. And then when the Kim Jong-un time, he initially banned Pleasure Squad for three years. And that, this made all of us very excited. Maybe because he's educated in Switzerland, we thought he's going to have a different understanding of human rights and he's going to end this. However, the only reason that he stopped was because he did not want to trust anybody that worked for Kim Jong-il, that his father. So he got rid of everybody who was working for Kim Jong-il time and then he found his own pleasure squad after three years of the death of his father. So since then, what's been going on? Why the people in North Korea cannot get a vaccine, cannot get a medicine, cannot even get food? Kim Jong-un buy individual horses to gifting to these girls to ride a horse so their body shape somehow becomes more ideal for him to enjoy. And he spends 4 million USD each year to buying these girls to lingerie and undergarments to uh, show in these private parties. 
Some of these private parties I heard, it can last even up to half a month, guys, 15 days. These are the women who was in part of pleasure squad who escaped later testified that. During this uh, party, this wild, wild parties that unthinkable corruption and human rights violation is happening. Uh, Kim Jong-un asking these women in their laundries to do wrestling and would turn off the lights suddenly and then letting the older cadres like attacking these girls. And of course for these women, they think this is the biggest glory us thing they can do for the regime and being loyal to the, the party. A lot of times in North Korean girls when they picked to pleasure squad, it's not up to them to decide. You know, nobody owns themselves in North Korea, nobody has human rights. So the regime goes around the country using other cadres and picking these girls up. The parents think, oh I kind of gave my daughter to the party and they feel that's the greatest honor. And also the other side of relief for parents is that at least my daughter is not going to starve to death. And therefore, even they are sex slaves for the regime, they're fine with that. So when this girl is being picked, even this process that horrified me and made me really speechless, how on earth can you do this in 21st century? They're just picking young girls. Some of them are elementary school girls. They, the first thing they ask them, they need to go through eight times, by the way, physical exams to be picked eventually as a pleasure squad member. The first thing is like, have you slept with a man? And then if they say no, then take them to in the big, big, big hall with many, many doctors in a, in a gigantic room and they make them all taking their clothes off. In this time, while they're going through the virginity check and all other physical exams, the party cadres come out and standing there and making fun of these young girls' bodies. So this is also why it's very important in the power of North Korean regime and Kim Jong-un's uh, position in the party. Why he's not giving up pleasure squad is also using these young innocent girls as his uh, leverage over corrupt, corrupt, evil, greedy elite men. So something called in North Korea, only thing we say, something called uh, gift politics. Uh, in the West, so far, I mean basically still it's a meritocracy. You go to certain schools, you get a certain education, and you get elected, and that's how you become a politician. In North Korea, it's not. You go through your family line, your bloodline, like Kim Jong-un. You, your bloodline determines your future. And when this man being royal to Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-un gives them certain life things that this man can never get outside North Korea. That is unlimited, unquestioned, and no responsibility whatever they do with these women. It's a, right, like some religions promise them, you know, if you die for this glory and the mission, I'm gonna give you seven virgins, you know, in the next life. And North Korea is the only country that gives them actual virgins in this life. So what do you think gonna happen? This man gonna be royal to Kim Jong-un at all costs. So in, they are part of this corrupt system. And so that's the thing, like a lot of people say, yeah, elites even get executed. Look at Zhang Songtaek, the uncle of Kim Jong-un got executed. Why are they not overthrowing the regime or also getting outside of the uh, regime, they can escape easily than the average people. Because of the this, that if you are a North Korean elite man, they, you, you do whatever thing to the woman, there is no such a thing called a sexual harassment or rape. That is not even a vocabulary that North Koreans use. There's no concept of human rights and not only that, there's no concept of that it's wrong to you know, force these things on women. So because of using this curse that Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, and Kim Jong-un, all three of, of them has been able to command that kind of royalty that other countries couldn't do. So North Korean women are the expendable and they are the leverage to, you know, gaining control for the leaders. And they are keep being used and being sacrificed in the, in the purpose of evil dictator Kim Jong-un. I really hope that more people in the world really hear about this part. You know, if we care about human rights, if we care about even human rights, 
This is something that United Nations, even any country in the world that stands for justice, that need to speak up against this tyranny. And this is the most evil practice that I've never heard like any other countries. Like I met so many citizens from Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, Iraq, other countries. And this is so corrupt that North Korean regime is only doing right now. And that is up to us to bring awareness and challenge and push back. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Please join me on my Patreon and please keep commenting on these videos and hit that like button. I love to see you in the next video. Thank you guys.